Now, if everything fails, this thing lets loose, I'm counting on you to catch it. So if you can do that, I will be very grateful. So today we are back working on the Escalade again. Working on the Escalade, I'm looking forward to this. We are gonna be replacing the blown out factory magnetic ride shocks with replacement factory magnetic ride shocks. I am not deleting the system. They cost me close to $700. Now, as always, please feel free to click the link at the top of the screen. That is going to bring you to my $2,000 Escalade playlist. And you can get all caught up on the progress I have made on this thing so far. I have quite a few videos attempting to bring this thing back to daily driver status after picking it up from auction for $2,000. Minus shipping and fees. Don't wanna leave that out. People get very upset. Now in a normal garage where the vehicle doesn't take up the entire length from wall to door and have a cabinet mounted right in front of it, I, you could just lift the hood out, but the, the hood hits the cabinet, so we, we're not getting under there. So I'm going to probably, there's stuff in here I gotta pop out. I'm gonna pop out the fender liner here just so it gets those bolts on top easier. You know what, I actually, I have pliers for this now. Oh man, that's incredible, look at that. These things are a game changer, man. This is like a gear wrench panel clip set. I'm gonna put a link to it down in the description. I mean, look at this, you could get right under there. Pull the center out. Oh, came out as a whole one on that one. She's leaving quite a bit of stains under there, huh? It looks like we got oil, we got power steering. She's a leaker. You guys probably can't see it. Oh, you can kind of see it. Now this is the difficult part because we got all this crap. Oh, that's broken. Oh, that's broken. Oh, that's broken. No, oh, that's broken. Hey, that's also broken. So that's what we're after. I'm gonna pull that electrical connector off the top. Then we got those three bolts we could get to easily now. And uh, we got the two at the bottom. And this thing should fall right out. Then we get to deal with the spring and the spring compressor. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. As many things that there are wrong with this, the leaks and kind of the crustiness, which really isn't, you know, it's typical for, you know, New York. Um, the brake lines is where they, uh, they figured out what they were doing for once. These have that coating on it. It's super thick, just plasticky coating. Absolutely no rot on any of the brake lines, which is incredible, because I don't know, I don't know if I could have did it. This thing needed brake lines too. I don't know if I would have been strong enough. Well, if I want any chance of these coming out, we should probably put them with a little WD-40. Normally I like PB Blaster. PB Blaster is really good stuff, but I like the fact that the, uh, the WD-40 kind of has this little robot phallus on it. Really get it in where you want it to go. How does this come off? Oh, there's a little, okay, that was really uneventful. That comes out super easy, look at that. Come on. Now as I remove these remaining two bolts, let's talk about the shocks real quick. So I bought just bare bones shock. I didn't, well, they're technically struts. I didn't get like the whole quick strut assembly. And the reason for that is because they're stupid expensive. Like you could get cheap magnetic replacement shocks on Amazon. You could get a pair with the spring and everything for two, not 200 bucks a side. So 400 bucks for the kit. And the reviews, eh, some people say they work great, just like the factory ride. Other people say, one of them failed within a few months or the ride is terrible. $200 a side, to put that into perspective, one strut, one OEM mag strut costs $300 to $450, depending on where you buy it from, just for one bare strut without the spring. So you can see my concern with going to, you know, a pair for $400. Now, our knot also makes, they're kind of like the leading company for making 
uh, replacement mag shocks for these. And they are also very expensive. You could get it or not, a single quick strut. So with the spring and the magnetic dampener would cost you 500, I believe it's like $550. I'll put the exact price on the screen. That's just for one of them. So if you do the both front, you're looking at over a grand easy. They do offer just the dampener alone without the spring, just like how GM offers it. That still is very close in price to the GM replacement. I believe it is around the same amount of money. It might be 330, I'll put that price on the screen as well. When I was looking, I believe the R not was actually like 10 or $20 more expensive for the Bayer Strut over the GM Genuine. And some people may not know this, well, a lot of people probably do know this, but it's changed. Are not used to offer a limited lifetime warranty, which would be incredible, especially since these are kind of like a problem shock. However, I got in contact with them because I noticed on their website that it says everything is two year warranty now. And sure enough, they emailed me back and they said, yeah, they don't do the limited lifetime anymore. So that's when I went back to GM Genuine on Rock Auto. They had them for 310 bucks a pair 310 bucks a strut slash shock for GM Genuine. And those, their OEM, exactly what was built for this truck. And they actually have a limited to lifetime warranty on the GM Genuines. I don't know how I would get them warrantied out if I had to, bring them to a dealer maybe, send them back to Rock Auto, but they are lifetime warranty, the OEM shocks for this truck. Now, I don't know if these were replaced before, I mean, they say made in Mexico, so I'm assuming not. These are probably the original with 150K on them, which is crazy to believe. I don't know, they could have been done before. But uh, yeah, I just went with the OEM stuff. I mean, why not? Then there's the whole, you know, talk about just getting rid of these and putting regular dampeners in that are way cheaper. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep the factory ride, keep this thing nice and soft and cloudy. So that's why we're putting back uh, the original Mac shocks. Get out of there. Whoa. Yeah, I guess it was under a little tension, huh? Come on, baby. Yeah. All right, so with the strut removed, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some of this stuff. This is really nice stuff. It's kind of messy, it's gooey, sticky, it's oily, but it's just a, uh, it's pretty much just an undercoating that's oily. So it's not an actual coating. It's like it's breathable because it's oil and uh, it'll keep the water out and you know, prevent this stuff from rotting anymore. I'm just gonna coat everything with it that I could get to right now. Goes on nice and thick. It likes to clog too sometimes. It clogs most of the time. Usually every time you go to use it. There we go. Uh, just brake clean myself. Can I steal the tip for my silicone spray? Ah, uh, it's a different tip. Okay, that's not gonna work. Matt's air full cleaner tip. That also has a male end on it. Spray paint tip. That might work. Spray paint tip. Nope, too thick. I don't know, do the cans just like lose the charge? Oh, I got more cans up here. I'll get on a new one, I think. Let's try this one. New can, new can. Ah, this one works for now. Come on. Well, it appears uh, that's all PB Blaster wants me to coat. Come on, man. And what is there anything not crap today? Like what isn't crap? It's clearly this is. You know what, better than nothing. Let's just. Give her some WD-40. Because I have no patience today. At least we have something on there. All right, now my spring compressor. It doesn't get used too often, so it is hiding up here. Deal with 
you later. I gotta put this stuff back anyway. All right. Ancient spring compressor. Now it is no secret that my Escalade rides a little rough. Ah, Tahoe definitely rides better than this. So hopefully these OEM shocks, struts, whatever you wanna call them, are gonna take care of that. Like I said, I got these from Rock Auto. They have like the best price on these. I shopped all over the place. I looked at different brands, off brands. At the end of the day, it seemed like the best option was just going with OEM because TRQ also makes shocks. They're kind of like a cheaper aftermarket brand. They also wanted $450, 100 less than the Arnott's for the complete assembly with the spring. And their bare struts were also, I think, around the price of OEM, or they may have been cheaper. They may have been $100 cheaper. I'm gonna put the price up on the screen. But I mean, Rock Auto had these with 308. Same exact part number, same exact shock strut you could get from Summit Racing for like $450 and other websites for like $400. Rock Auto was like the cheapest by far for these. And the funny thing is the shipping was only $13. So if you're looking to do this, get them from Rock Auto. Get a spring compressor. I say that now. I'm, it's a thick spring. I didn't even realize it. Let's see how this goes. There's the part number. If you are so interested. And yeah, limited lifetime on these. I mean, OEM, limited lifetime. You can't go wrong with that. Until they deny your claims and don't warrant you, warrant to you shit. I don't know if we're going to have enough throw in our tool to kind of separate these. I feel like there's probably a reason why they offer these so many companies to sell these as quick struts. I'm gonna try to get this as high up as possible. And this is not a joke. If you've never did this before, I'd, I'd probably recommend just buying the quick chalk strut. However, almost, if this does work out, we will be saving, so let's say we got the good ones. We got the Arnata, they're like, 550 a piece these were round down eight dollars to 300 250 dollars a side savings by just doing this and reusing the spring it's like we have a nut up here i guess this comes off and then that's the actual nut down there you have a fart so bad it leaves you fighting for your life no me neither Whew. Yeah, let's see what this does Oh, this got to go on the other one, doesn't it? We got to reuse this because that's the actual, that's what holds the connector on. Ouch. All right, let's get the glove back on. Make sure. That's the same size. So yeah, we got our socket ready. Let's compress this thing, see what happens. Now, if everything fails, this thing lets loose. I'm counting on you to catch it. So if you can do that, I will be very grateful. Be ready, have your catcher's mitt ready. I believe in you. I believe in you guys. Let's reposition. Oh. Let's reposition and we'll get the air gun. Normally, you know, I've done this before like a million times. It's just, this is a thick, it's like a chode spring. The chode spring frightens me. Well, you know what we gotta do now. I gotta try to get in there with a box wrench, hold this and just do it the manual way. Going, I'm just getting like a thread every like 20 rotations. There's like nothing to grab on here. Come on, man. Like I need an 18 with a shoulder on it. This would, oh, yes. Dude, this thing just stopped dead in its tracks. Like it does not want to turn. That's kind of a problem. God. Damn. These might be the original shocks, like they are friggin' stuck on there, man. That nut does not want to come off. <sighs> All right. That's, oh, that's 
biting down pretty tight. a thread but uh i don't have heat i got like a little stupid ass butane torch i'll probably be here all year but we could try it i don't know what happened the threads weren't even that bad it was going and it just stopped <laughs> nothing it's just stopped man i'd like to see if i get a second vice grip on it you know double the clamping power then Get more surface area. Can't uh, seem to get in here. Well, I managed to get another vice grip in there. Uh, it definitely moved. Maybe one thread. Oh, this is my last battery, so better give it up now. Now this is the part where I'm gonna need you to catch it for me. Now you can still have some tension depending on the way the, sing the spring is sitting in the mount, but ideally I'd like to just leave, oh, we gotta take these off. They are on there, man. I'm not going anywhere with those in there. Now that's it, that's the pin for the grenade, so. Just want to leave this in place. Just want to pull this guy out and we're going to put it right back in. In a perfect world, I tried to clean all the goop and oil off the bottom of the spring. And you know what? I think I'm going to try to anyway. It's like wiping the ass of a bull. All right, so now we'll slip our new guy in. Sucks, I can't, I got to use this sketchy nut. I'm not happy about that. It seems to be going on fine though. I got to try to clock this. It's like a weird, what is in there? Oh, it's like a spacer? Why the hell is that in there? Well, that we should put on the shock. Right? No. Hmm. I feel like this should go in here. That was in the bottom of the mount, so let's take this off. Let's put you on there. Then we'll put you on there. Then we'll put you on there. And then we'll put you on there. Okay. Ooh, ooh, I feel better right now. Not on there a whole lot, but you know, it's on there. Let's see if we can give it a little bit. Oh yeah, she's just scrunching down. Crisis avoided, avoided, averted, averted. All right, so we got the nut on there. Now this is the part where I'm trying to make sure I don't screw it up because these aren't like a typical strut where the mount itself rotates. So this is all fixed. And yeah, sure, we got this lined up where it needs to go. However, we gotta make sure the end of this guy, it's gonna be, you know, does it go like that? 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 We have to get it like perfect. So, I could try to get this in there. No, I can't. I gotta take the, whatever. We're, we're just guessing. By the looks of it, if you look at that front hole right there, it's dead center. We're really close to dead center, and that goes straight down. So what we're gonna do is just line up that top hole, or that stud, dead in line with the two ears for the bottom mount. So this is the front. So we want this guy to kind of be as straight as we could get it with that. Is that all the way down? I mean, it feels all the way down. All right, so that's our retainer for the connector. Now let's just uh, loosen the bomb. I like using the air, it's just, 
it's less violent. You could control it a little better. It's not just on or off like the other thing. Whoo, mama. Yeah, one down, one to go. So we're going to drop it in. Then we got to get the control arm down. Ah, oh, dude, that's like... Ooh, they do give you some movement. A little bit of movement they give you. To twist it. Okay, that might be enough. However, this guy got to come down. It's like... That's the wrong direction. Gotta get it on top of the control arm. Ah, oh, dude. Wow! That's not even close. There she is. Now we're sagging. Oh, yeah. Can I get the bottom in first? Hell no. So we gotta get the... It's gotta get seated. Oh, man, that's it. Yeah. All right, let's whiz these down. Just gotta tighten these guys up, tighten the ball joint that didn't even need to be removed. Put the end link back on, clip our connector on, and do it all again on the other side. Ah, perfect. Put the lock in. Oh no, it's spring loaded. So that's it. We're done on this side. Well, with the strut at least. Let me throw this together and I'll meet you on the other side. Now we've definitely learned some things for this side. For one, now I can open the hood. I believe I can just zip the top mount bolts out from under the hood and take the electrical connector off. So we might just be able to skip the step having to take the wheel well out. This control arm looks like it may be newer. Well, maybe not. There's just a little more paint left on this one. There's less rust on this side. I like to think that'll help us get the shock off better. The shock strut mount off, but you know what? It's rarely ever the case. Well, I mean, I guess the street side will see all the road salt and everything when it's parked, but... Yeah, this side looks like it's in way better condition. Maybe I'll take it down to AutoZone after this. It kind of needs... I think I'm gonna throw some stop leak in the power steering. See if it stops the stupid rack drip. I'm not putting a rack in this thing. It's ridiculous. Luckily, it doesn't look like it's, like, bad to get to. It's just mounted, just slapped right on the K-member. But... Still don't want to spend the money. I mean, the stop leak worked for the Trans Am anyway. Oh man, that was way faster than the other side. All right, ah, onto the death clamp. See, I mean, look at that. Way less crusty than the other side. Ah, back to the operating cable. Get these guys on. We could go ahead and remove you first and foremost. That's an accident waiting to happen with that jack handle up. For anybody who's wondering, these are actually the, uh, they're the same part number. The trick to ordering the correct ones, you gotta look in your glove box at the RPO code. First of all, you gotta have Z95 for the magnetic ride control. As long as you have Z95, look towards the end, there'll be some RPOs with some numbers. I think one's like a six, six L1 or seven L1. There'll be a six and a seven code. And you just go and match those codes on Rock Auto. And then you'll know for sure which ones fit them because there's like a million shocks for these things on Rock Auto. As sketch as this seemingly homegrown, backyard built, welded together spring compressor may be, 
This actually belongs to my uncle. And it is very old. It's got to be at least 30 years old. And old cars were heavy. And they were land yachts. And they had beefy big ass springs. Which is why, you know, it looks a little sketchy. I, well, you know what, I'm not going to say anything until, uh, until the new strut is in there and the nut is back on top. At least someone didn't fight me. Man, that spring is... I don't know why the hell that took so much more to compress. Uh, I should have had the strut ready. God, this thing is freaking destroyed, dude. Could have used some new bump stops, but you know what? Tough sheet. Like I was saying, this is an incredible, very deadly looking, but incredible spring compressor. And I stand by my words. <clears throat> Up or down. Still, it's just as heavy as the other side, I'll tell you that. All right, so it is a few days later since I installed the new Magnoride shocks. I wanted to really kind of drive this thing over the weekend, put some miles on it, tell you guys what I think about it. First of all, it's like night and day. Like the front two shocks were 100% the problem. There's actually no noise in the suspension whatsoever. There's no squeaks, rattles, nothing. The alignment's perfectly straight. Literally, it just needed the shocks and that was it. So I'm happy about that. The rear shocks feel to be in good shape. They're pretty much equal. They feel equal in dampening as the front, like they're not too harsh in the back or anything. So I looked at the Carfax, it seems like they were replaced. I don't know if it was the front or rear, but it said shocks were replaced at least a couple of times. And the fact that the fronts looked pretty much original, I think they put a few, um, a few sets of rear ones in over the years. So we saved money there. We saved money by reusing the uh, springs and mounts. Didn't have to get a whole quick strut assembly. Oh, this thing is so friggin' smooth now. Every time I'm gonna hit a bump, I feel like uh, I, I'm bracing and like cringing because it just feel, it felt so bad for the truck. It felt like it was gonna rip like the shock mount off the frame whenever it hit a bump before. I will say this, I did think that the ride was gonna be a little bit softer, but I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that this has um, those 22 inch wheels on it. If this had like a thick like 70 series sidewall like the Tahoe does, it'll probably ride even cushier. But that's the thing, when you go ahead and you get rid of those Magna Ride shocks and you go to put passive suspension in, like if you were gonna take these wheels and throw them on the Tahoe, it would ride like hell. So that Magna Ride is there for a reason. It puts in work to really kind of dampen the ride and make it comfortable with those big ass wheels on it. But I'm really happy with the way everything came out. That's one more thing crossed off the list. Next video, we're gonna start tackling the air conditioning because it's getting warm out. I wanna address that. Hopefully, it's just a simple recharge, maybe change a valve here or there. But uh, we all know that is, that's probably not gonna be the case. 